Let's talk revolution, ladies and gentlemen. I remember a very interesting article um, by a friend of mine by the name of Matt. He wrote this article. He's a he's a journalist. Uh, he writes for um, the Saturday paper and uh, the monthly and uh, a number of these globalist kind of publications. And he travels the world and writes different articles, mainly uh, travelogue kind of things, and also thought pieces on dangerous parts of the world that he visited. But anyway, he wrote this piece on um, uh, on on Macron, where he said that if Macron is not elected there will be a civil war in, in France. And I remember, I mean, you know, I've read many of his articles and I knew he was a kind of a kind of globalist politics. He's a mainstream journalist and, uh, and, and we're friends on Facebook and stuff. So I actually wrote to him because he's a friend of mine and I said, um, that's fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? What you've just written then is literally fake news. And then he, he sort of blamed the headline on the, um, uh, the copy editor who gave the article that particular headline. But... It was within the context of the article, he also said basically the same thing. And I said, that's a complete lie. Like, the truth is, is if you uh, were to elect Marine Le Pen, there wouldn't be a civil war because she would, um, you know, bring stability and a kind of nationalist kind of unity to the country that I think would, would have staved off what, what you see happening now. And that, um, you know, uh, but what he was saying, you know, if you elect Macron, I said there definitely will be a civil war. And of course he was like, oh, you're full of shit. You're always going on about this new right politics. You know, he had the usual go at me. And uh, recently he deleted me off, <laughs> off Facebook, so um, fuck him. And, um, but anyway, um, I thought it was interesting because, uh, and I think what the, I, the issue that kind of finally uh, was the final straw when I pointed out to him that, yeah, well, okay, the, two years ago when, when Macron was elected, or a year and a half ago, uh, you said there wouldn't be a civil war. And then I think now the Yellow Vest Revolution had been going on for, I don't know, eight weeks now, and the country was in flames. And, like, you know, the, the, the police were beginning to shoot live ammunition at the protesters. Like, this was like a fucking civil war. I said, well, there you go. There you go. You're full of shit. And that was the final straw between us, I think. And, um, you know, there you go. Um, there is a civil war going on in France. People have had enough. And this is what's incredible about the Yellow Vests, is this is... Uh, a group that is of the right and of the left, and it represents a unity of left and right. What I would call the old left, which is the, um, the left that's concerned about, for example, the ideas concerned with the wages of the working class and the wages of the middle class, and also the right wing uh, animus against anti-immigration and stuff. These two wings have combined. And I've always said the day they do combine is the day that, you know, you'll have a serious revolution on your hands. And that's exactly what's happening in France right now. And I think this is really... Um, the globalist's worst nightmare because um, the globalists and their lackeys, people like Matthew, the journalist Matthew, um, this is their worst fear um, because this is uh, people really standing up on the left and right and uniting against this cabal and, you know, and this kind of a uh, feat. Um, um, kind of elite class that are happy to um, make out that, you know, the neoliberal world order is not under threat or that is not in crisis and is discontinuing. So this yellow vest revolution has been praised, you know, by figures on the left and right. I mean, I, you know, I've seen um, Nigel Farage uh, praise it. I've seen Trump praise it. I've even seen some left wing figures like Zizek praise it, who considers himself a communist. Um, John Pilger has praised it. I'm not sure what Chomsky is sort of, but I'd Bet there's a side of Chomsky that admires it. Um, you know, this is what's really fascinating about it. When you're seeing this unity, you know, when two sides of politics are coming together, and I think this is extremely powerful. Um, and I also think why it will not be allowed to succeed, because we really are ruled by this globalist elite class, this, you know, plutocratic collectivist class, which is essentially plutocratic means the rule of the rich, and collectivist means that, you know, they're essentially just collecting everything. You know, the, the main strategy of the globalist, even though they, they embrace both sides of politics, they embrace the left, the new left, and they embrace the right, the libertarian right. They're the sides of the politics that the globalists have infected on both the left and the right. Um, they, they do use that, both sides of those, that politics to, to kind of push their agenda. But their true agenda is essentially strip mining. What they're going to do, for example, in Venezuela, they're going to say, oh, this, you know, there's a socialist country and it's, oh, it's terrible. This, this socialism has brought these poor people in Venezuela to their knees and we're going to go there and we're going to help them. We're going to bring democracy to Venezuela. It's going to be wonderful. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to waltz on into Venezuela. They're going to kill everybody, as many people as they can. I mean, the Venezuela might be in crisis, but believe me, when they're finished, it's going to be in a lot worse state than it is now. And then they're going to steal the oil 
and then they're going to give the oil contracts to the major globalist corporations, and they're going to, and they're going to control the biggest oil fields in the world that are even bigger than Saudi Arabia. And what happens to the people? Doesn't fucking matter. Literally doesn't matter. And they will be in a state of terrible chaos. Maybe if the oil fields are so um, productive, maybe they'll bring a little bit of stability to the country just to make it look good for the TV cameras from CNN and MSNBC and all the other bullshit fucking fake news um, you know, providers. This is one of the very important things. I know it's uh, unusual to see a book by Noam Chomsky held up on, a, on, on the Unshackled, but this guy is the originator of the idea of um, fake news that Donald Trump is always talking about. This book is called Manufacturing Consent, and it talks about how mass media... Uh, it's a, you know, it's a powerful assessment of how the US media uh, fail to provide any kind of information that we need to understand the world. Now, this is a book um, that is really one of the major books of the left of the last 30 years. And the very fact that CNN and MSNBC and Washington Post and the New York Times is pushing the agenda of the new left tells you, according to Chomsky's very theory, that it's bullshit. You know what I mean? I don't know why they don't even read their own literature and understand that this fake politics has now overtaken their own politics and their own politics has become fake. And that's why when you're here on the left, you don't hear talk of, you know, like economic equity so much. And it's always about multicultural tolerance and gay and lesbian and global warming and the new feminism and blah, 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 which is all the fake side of the new left politics. So this is what's going on at the moment. And um, I think the yellow vests is, is a sign of um, true solidarity uh, on both sides of politics. And it's, I guess it's what you call being fully woke, you know? Uh, when both sides on left and right see who the true enemy is and think, fuck, they're out to fuck us. And guess what? They are. If you would ask me what kind of politics that I consider myself, I would say I would be of the new right. Uh, I'm not someone though I'm someone who's written for uh, some of the alt-right, um, and I admire some aspects of the alt-right, and I think the alt-right's very interesting, I would consider myself more new right. And new right, the term arose around the intellectual, uh, the French intellectual, Alain de Benoist, and he founded a, a group called Greece. It's spelled G-R-E-C-E, -E, and it was a think tank. It was kind of an elitist think tank that wanted to reposition um, uh, right politics along a more nationalist line. And this happened 30 or 40 years ago. So within the history of ideas, what you're seeing manifest now happened a while ago. Um, it happened in the 70s and 80s. And he began to, you know, like deliver papers where he began to reposition right wing philosophy in a, in a different way, uh, along a more nationalist line, but without, you know, it had some connection to some, uh, some aspects of fascism, possibly, but it also had some connection to some aspects of socialism. And that it also gained um, a dialogue with some aspects of the socialist left, which is obviously huge in France. And so what you're seeing now with the yellow vests is actually a revolutionary manifestation of the ideas of Alain de Benoist. And he is obviously very excited about the idea of the yellow vest because quite literally it is the uh, manifestation of the ideas, which is some kind of unity between left and right and going after this elite class, this elite, this bourgeois elite, this globalist elite class that's been ruling over us for a very long time now. And um, the, he's not the only intellectual that has celebrated this kind of movement. Uh, I'm also friends with Alexander Dugin, who's a famous um, Russian um, intellectual, who's also a friend of of, uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, he is an advisor to Putin and he's a friend of mine on Facebook and has actually shared a couple of my articles, which I thought was rather a nice honour, uh, particularly my one where I pointed out that mass immigration was um, anti-racist, being opposed to mass integration. That article he seemed to uh, appreciate, so it was nice that he shared that. Um, but yeah, he's another one that really, um, you know, is, is very celebratory of um, this, this kind of unity uh, that you see. And that obviously with, with Russians, because they have a communist background, but they have this strong kind of new ethno-nationalism that they're part of. So obviously they're mixing a kind of this socialist uh, communist past with this kind of ethno-nationalism. And you're seeing something, you know, very interesting developing in Russia as well. I mean, if you want to start to say who was the first person, I guess, on the world stage to push this new politics, it is Vladimir Putin. And this, in, where he transformed the Russian uh, agenda from communism, from the collapse of communism through the 90s, through the kind of, I guess, um, Yeltsin's embrace of capitalism, which was kind of semi disastrous well, not semi-disastrous, majorly disastrous, but Yeltsin had his revenge, and his great revenge was to appoint um, a very tough KGB lieutenant of his, Putin, to be the next president, because he thought, okay, you might have fucked me over, and because and the globalists had invaded Russia, and they were strip mining the country, they were stealing all its assets, because that's what they do. I mean, there's only one thing globalists ever do, steal everything. 
And, you know, I mean, there's all these wars, they invade, you know, Venezuela. Why don't we invade the Cayman Islands? You know what I mean? Why don't we invade Switzerland? Because what do you think all this money is? And trust me, you know how much money would be there? Trillions and trillions of dollars would be in these countries. And I mean, even if you went there and found out the accounts that were illegal, I mean, some accounts may be legally held, but there'll be so much illegal loot in those countries. You could, you could, you could probably afford 10 Bernie Sanders or, or 10 Ocasio, you know, um, uh, Cortezes. Uh, so, you know, like there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, illegal loot hiding in these countries that the globalists have been funneling off. I mean, the global financial crisis was all about a transfer of wealth. You know, this, this whole idea about quantitative easing, this is bullshit. You know, they could have, like, they could have basically said, we're all in debt. We all know, we all got credit cards up the ass, blah, blah, blah. They could have cleared people's credit cards. They could have written off people's, like, uh, mortgages and given people their homes. But no, they fed money to the banks. And that was somehow helpful. No, no, this was just another... What's going on right now, it's the same with global warming, which is another scam. Uh, it's all about a, a giant transfer of wealth to the mega elite. And once they have, essentially, all the world's wealth, their idea is to, it's, it's the 1984 plan, to enslave us all under a system of, you know, essentially political correctness with teeth, which, would, which you're already seeing beginning now. And um, that's why the Yellow Vest movement is a true uprising against um, the forces of evil, I think, in the world. And that's why you're seeing uh, it being praised on the left and the right. And that's what's so important about it, I think. Yeah, there's, a, there's a great quote by Winston Churchill. He said that the, uh, the fascists of the future will declare themselves anti-fascist, you know what I mean? So I think if, if, if you were to look at, you know, all aspects of politics from the nationalist side to the socialist side to the globalist side to what Macron represents, the true fascists are Macron, um, this elite uh, politics that he represents. Uh, and you're also seeing him beginning to, essentially he's deployed a kind of, you know, a kind of Rothschild kind of Gestapo on the French people, you know, which is essentially the security force. And this is what they've been doing. While, while the left and the right have been involved in this, you know, internecine fight with each other, because we're always supposed to hate each other, because that's a very, divide and conquer is a very old trick. Not only of the globalists, it was something the British Empire invented. The globalists, for, for example, are copying the British Empire and what the British Empire did. So you should keep an eye on that, because essentially, what, what we English people did years ago is essentially the strategy of the globalists that they're extending. You're seeing, you know, Macron becoming more and more ruthless in, in essentially deploying a kind of globalist Gestapo because the two countries that are very, very important for the EU to continue are essentially France and Germany. And if one of them falls, like if France were to fall to the Yellow Vest, which it could technically fall to them at any time. I mean, all it needs, there's a top general who, uh, who had a falling out with Macron. I can't remember his name now, but I shared some photographs of him on Facebook. Um, you can probably look him up, but um, he's a top general. He had a problem with Macron. All he's got to do is just, you know, basically hold the military coup and say enough, you know. And that's it for Macron, you know what I mean? And that's exactly what needs to happen. And probably something similar needs to happen in Germany. Finally, we're going to need to rely on our armies. And do our, are our armies going to side with the traitors, you know? And it, I would say that to the Australian army. Have a look into things because you're going to see a great level of corruption. I mean, for example, um, Shorten's politics and you're seeing Chinese spies like that guy who, what's he, what was the name of him? He, he, Destari or whatever, Sam Destari. Penny Wong, you can be absolutely sure, is a Chinese spy. Um, there's a whole bunch of Chinese spies on the Labor side, you know, and these, country, these people will sell our country down the down the river to, to China and they're already selling in this country down the river to China selling off bits of they gave it an airport recently for one dollar they sold an airport to China I imagine what's going to be brought in there things to destabilize and destroy this country so you know this is a terrible state of affairs um, there's, there's high levels of espionage high levels of of mischief going on within the globalist class and it's, it's quite scary and um, you know I think the importance of something like the Yellow Vest is it represents a true unity of the people on both sides of politics, just saying enough, you know, and we need something like that in the UK, we need something like that like in Australia, we need something like that in Germany and all major Western nations. And I tell you what, we need something like that in the United States. And that's what the globalists in the United States most fear, because you can imagine if there's a huge Yellow Vest um, uh, revolution in the United States. To think the yellow vests, but where everybody has got an AR-15. <laughs> you would say how quickly that revolution would last. Believe me, they would take over the place within a few weeks. So that's why they've been taking away our guns in the West, of course, because they knew this time is coming when we're going to be enslaved. That's why, you know, that whole bullshit, what's the name of that um, incident down in Tasmania? 
Um, well, they took everyone's guns away. That was a load of bullshit. That was a fucking false flag um, psy operation. You know, uh, they blamed it on some poor mentally ill guy. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just nonsense. It's bullshit. Well, that was to take away Australians' guns, and we gave them up. So you know, we're in trouble. You know, there's people out to enslave us, and believe me, they'll succeed unless we're willing to fight back. At least fight back right now politically. At least get out while we still can and say the truth, because the ability to say the truth is 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 fast diminishing. You know, and our window where we can escape from this 1984 f uh, future is 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 fast um, closing. So unless we escape now, unless we send up the flags now of freedom and liberty and, and fighting for our nation and our people, um, we're all fucked and we better fucking realise it and do something about it.